Hey guys, Kyle here from Amen Auto, and today I'm making a very sad video. It is the goodbye video to our 2021 Jeep Wrangler Sahara 4xE. Um, for those of you that don't know and don't follow the channel, we got this in 2021, three years ago. Lease ends this month, and we absolutely loved it. We love this car to death. Um, you're probably wondering why we're getting rid of it. I promise I'll get to all that shortly. I'll try to make this a quicker video. Um, but it has 53,000 miles. Been bulletproof. We love it. That's a short version. You can leave if you want. I'm <laughs> just kidding. But, so, for those of you that don't remember, or for those of you, you know, you might be watching this video because you're thinking of buying a used one or just seeing how reliable they are. Um, this is a 370 horsepower, 300 or 480 pound feet of torque Jeep Wrangler. 2 liter turbo under the hood, 280 horsepower, and then it has an electric motor sandwiched in the transmission from a 17 kilowatt hour battery that's stored under the back seat. I can show you guys that. And it propels the car for about 20 to 25 miles on all electric range. Um, the range between 20 and 25 miles depends on which trim level you get. If you have a Rubicon with the 33 inch tires, you won't get quite as much range versus a Sahara or Sport S with the uh, street oriented tires. The battery lives right here under the seat. For those of you that don't know, uh, talking about range, I just want to quickly point out this vehicle has 53,000 miles. I'll probably say that way too much. I apologize. And we've noticed no battery degradation. Um, maybe a mile, maybe two, but we did switch to off-road oriented tires. I'll show you guys that in a minute. But range so far has not dropped off. So for those of you worried about getting an EV or a plug-in hybrid because of battery, I don't know. So far, so good. Um, battery degradation, no issue. This vehicle has been used. Um, I say that because I want to stress to you guys, I haul lawnmower in this every every week. We have two dogs, we have a kid, and we tow a boat with this thing. It has seen a lot of family wear and tear use. This probably has gotten more use than the average Wrangler. Interiors held up great considering there's kids and dogs in here. Um, it's not perfect. The leather's gotten a little bit shiny. I don't like that. That kind of gives a cheap vibe, but it's held up very well. No rips, no tears, no nothing. So very happy about that. And going to these tires, I do want to point out, no, these are not stock. These are Falcon Wild Peaks, and I'd highly recommend them. They look so much nicer than the stock tires on the Sahara. Um, the stock tires on the Sahara had about 40,000 miles on it. It was coming up winter. They didn't quite need to be changed out, but we thought with the winters we have here in Wisconsin, let's get a nice new tire. I do like it as the snowflake. They are snow rated. It's not a dedicated snow tire, but they are rated to do well in the snow. So uh, they've done great. We put 13,000 miles in these tires. Tread life seems great. Noise barely went up. And I, again, I don't know if it's placebo effect or not. We still seem to get over 20 miles per range, uh, per charge, or should I say. And so if you guys need to change your tires, they're not that cheap especially when you get the fifth matching spare. Uh, but I love these tires, would recommend them. Um, and let's talk about towing because if you guys watch my channel, you know we have a boat. I raced my brother's uh, Sea-Doo on it and right there is the tow package. You got the seven and a four pin connector there. And this boat, tow, we tow this, uh, we tow with this all the time. Our boat weighs 3000 pounds and we've had those two dogs, a kid, me and my wife and a 3,000 pound boat in this car and have done a 300 mile road trip. Um, most Wranglers do not get that type of abuse and use. Uh, it did it without a sweat. Now, am I gonna say it's better than even this Traverse or F-150? Absolutely not. This is not, a, I don't think you should buy this if you're looking for a dedicated tow rig, um, but it definitely does the job, it can. And so if you guys are just dead set on a Wrangler, but you have your toy you wanna tow, this can tow 3,500 pounds. For 2024, some trims due to the upgraded axle actually tow more than that, 4,500. Uh, so there's that. If you wanna tow with it, you can. But the bad thing about this thing is when you tow, this has a smaller fuel tank because there's the battery they needed to make a little room. This only gets, when we were towing, about eight miles per gallon. That's abysmal. Um, even for towing standards, especially considering the boat's only about 3,000 pounds. Um, I'm not saying that's a light load, but it's definitely a far cry from a heavy load. Um, and so we were with the small fuel tank only averaging about 130 to 150 miles of range per fill up. Um, so that means you're going down the highway every two hours we had to stop and top up. And it just got old very fast when you just want to get to your destination. Um, 
to have to fill up that much and it gets expensive really quick when you keep dropping 45 bucks in the tank every two hours um Heck, if you gotta stop that much, you're better off buying a, a freaking electric SUV to tow because those have to stop about every hour and a half, two hours, and it'll cost you half as much to charge. Um, that being said, it does it, but just be aware your range while towing uh, is gonna be significantly impacted. But I've blabbled on long enough about towing. Let's talk about uh, range in general and why this doesn't make a lot of sense for a lot of people, but it does for a lot of people as well. So range on this is about 21 miles. But after that, it's important to remember, a lot of people seem to focus on the 50 MPG combined, blah, blah, blah. Here's the, here's the reality of it. This gets 25 miles on a charge. When the battery dies, this gets 20 miles per gallon city, 20 miles per gallon highway. That's not very good, especially in the year 2024. And I say that because the Chevy Traverse, spoiler alert, we have a video coming on that, has a 300 horsepower V6 engine, three rows of seating, and can tow 5,000 pounds and that average is 27. We just did a 600 mile road trip with that. 600 miles and we averaged 27 miles per gallon. This car would have averaged 20 miles per gallon. And if you go a little fast, if you go above 70, this big brick in the wind here design, you're, you'll be getting 18, 19 miles per gallon. So let's say you do a 500 mile road trip, you're gonna save a ton of money on fuel driving something like that. So some people, you know, it's plug-in hybrid, you wanna save the environment. Yeah, it's, it's good for the environment if you are charging and just doing local trips and you can charge every day uh, like we did we charge this thing every single day and burn the battery almost every single day but if you do a lot of road trips that or almost any SUV will get significantly better uh, a Ford F-150 my father-in-law has a Ford F-150 with a 5 liter V8 not the hybrid and that gets 23 on the highway so just keep that in mind you guys if you if you do a lot of highway driving and you're just you're like, I need a Wrangler, I love them, I love the way they look, just skip the 4xE because the 2 liter turbo, uh, it weighs 700 pounds less. Thus, you get about one to two more miles per gallon. So when you when that battery's dead back there, that's a 700 pound anchor on this thing. Um, now when it's charged, I will say this thing is quick. This thing zero to 60 is about five and a half seconds. Uh, that's about a second faster than the two liter turbo or V6. So if speed is what you're looking for, this is a very fuel efficient way to have a 370 horsepower Jeep Wrangler. I will say that. Uh, so keep that in mind, you guys. If performance is a priority and you don't wanna get the 10 miles per gallon 392 that costs 90 grand, this is a good option. Well, let's quickly talk about pricing. Um, speaking of, because these suckers have gotten expensive. And I don't even know if I can recommend one of these in 2024. And I say that because when we ordered this in 2021, they were, the, they were the hot new thing. They hit the market. We bought this like five months after they came out. And all in, we ordered it. It was $56,000. I think it was like $55,900. So fifty six grand. Today, you go on a website and build this vehicle. It's $63,000. Sorry about the noise, you guys. It's rush hour. But it's $53,000. Um, or $63,000, sorry. That's way too much money. Um, Jeep really hit it out of the park. This started... At 49,000 when they came out in 2021, they sold like hotcakes with the lease incentive. People were signing and driving these for like 300 a month. It was really insane. There were stories of people signing their name and driving off the dealer lot in $60,000 Wranglers for freaking 350 a month. It was absolutely insane. Jeep has changed that. Every year they've jacked up the price because they know they can. They were like, wait, our payments are almost too low. Let's 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 eat. Let's take some more profits in, and that's what they've done. Unfortunately, even the paint colors now. Uh, they used to be a $280 option, now they're like $595. They've doubled the price of their paint options. So, that was a weird car. Anyway, so, uh, you know, when this was $56,000, and I'm not saying that's cheap, but at least it's fully loaded. Let's take a step inside. When it, you know, this has keyless, this has LED uh, front and back lighting, this has heated steering wheel, premium sound system, dual zone climate control push button start has the tow package as we've already discussed with the auxiliary switches this thing is pretty loaded um no driver assist that's the only thing we didn't get on this sucker it even has the garage door opener which works wonderfully um <laughs> i say that the vehicle's not on um but this car has proven just 
at 56,000, this car was a lot better, I thought, than at 63. 63 grand, I don't know, you guys. Pricing's gotten out of control. I digress. Let's talk about the miles really quick. 52,000 miles, 578. Um, something that's interesting that I want you guys to think about. When you have a plug-in hybrid, there's no way, unfortunately, let me know if I'm wrong in the comments, to look at total miles driven in electric. There are hybrid electric pages, and you can see that we can see the previous week and the current week. So you can see all the electric driving we do versus gas and how many miles driven total. But I would bet this engine only has 20,000 to 25,000 miles on it. Um, every day we charged it, and the first 25 miles were in electric. Um, and that include weekends when a lot of times it would just drive in electric all day. So I think plug-in hybrids are going to create this interesting scenario of you might have a 10-year-old vehicle with 100,000 miles on it or 200,000 miles on it, and the engine has 20,000, 30,000 miles on it. So people like to talk about how electric vehicles, you know, aren't built to last or in 10 years they're junk. Um, you know, whatever new excuse they come up with this week, to be honest, um, they like to move the goalpost. But imagine this plug-in hybrid might actually extend this vehicle's life. Because if you get 150,000 miles on the engine and 150,000 miles on the electric powertrain, this powertrain might take you to 300,000. Um, knock on something, the shiny leather that's got nice and shiny. It's held up well, but um, it's just a food for thought. These plug-in hybrids might actually last very long because the engines aren't being used as much. So I could see a scenario where there's a retired person or someone who works from home who only uses electric to run errands and they might have a 10-year-old Wrangler and the engine's nearly brand new. Um, so I wish there was a way to look at that because if you're buying these used, that's very important. Um, there's a lot of stories of people buying these and not even plugging them in because they just leased better. And so you would want, you wouldn't want one of those used versus a new uh, one that was always driven in electric because of the wear and tear in the engine. So it's just a very interesting way to think about things. Um, otherwise, this has the 8.4-inch Connect screen. Uh, they've updated it, as you guys probably know if you're watching this video, and I don't I don't miss it. It does look nice. It looks cool, but it's just a new another toy. It's not functional. This works great. It looks fine. It's starting to look a little dated in here, perhaps, but it's still a high-quality interior with the leather stitching, the exposed bolts. It's all held together extremely well. We've had the roof off 50 times, the doors off a dozen times, and this sucker has held up wonderfully. So... Man, we're going to miss this car, you guys. So, why are we getting rid of it then if we love it so much is probably what you guys are asking. My wife, as of last month, found out she's getting a new job. It's awesome for her. But she's going to be driving 100 miles a day. Um, this thing's held its value very well. The buyout on the lease is, don't quote me exactly, it's right around $34,000. Dealers on trade and will offer us about $32,000. You know, so it's held about 60% of its value over, you know, three years with 52,000 miles on it. That's a pretty good residual considering that there was the tax credit. People say EVs values don't hold well. Um, that's partly true, but you got to remember, you have to lop $7,500 off the top because of the federal tax credit. You're not going to gain that tax credit and double dip when you go to sell it. So even though this was a $56,000 vehicle, after the tax credit, it was under 50. Um... So when you look at it that way, this has depreciated about $15,000 with 53,000 miles on it. They've came out. There's a new 24 that has an updated exterior, updated interior. So I think that's a pretty good value. But off on that tangent, um, we uh, we just can't buy it, you guys. It's $33,000, $34,000 to buy, buy this thing. And then my wife's going to put 25,000 miles a year on it. That just doesn't make sense. It's not a good use case for the plug-in hybrid. Um we're, it's going to just suck gas terribly. We'd be better off taking that Traverse every day with 27 miles per gallon highway than piling miles on this thing. In two years, this thing will have 110,000 miles on it. And, and what, we still have a loan on it for two or three more years? Um, it just doesn't make sense. Um, and it's really unfortunate because, guys, we love this car. Um, it hasn't disappointed us. We tow with it. Our dogs are in it. Our family has grown to love this thing. And my wife has genuinely shed tears over this vehicle. I feel bad. Um... I don't want to get rid of it, but you guys, you know, you got to move on to the next thing. If you guys have questions, please leave a comment down below. Um, there aren't many 4xe's with over 50,000 miles. Um, ours has been bulletproof. I keep saying that. I know I'm being repetitive, but I recommend getting one. 
Um, try to find a deal though, because again, the price has crept up on these and kind of tainted their desirability in my opinion. But otherwise, you guys, if you want a 4xE, get one. They're cool, they're reliable, and you can't look much cooler while being better for the environment. If you drive 20 miles a day or something and you can do all electric all the time, just freaking get one. They're awesome. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye, Jeep. Peace.